Hi, my name is Michael Glover. I'm an automation software engineer at Applied Projects Engineering. In this guide, I'm going to quickly run through setting up tags and cap server EX6 with the Siemens S7 PLC and TIA. While this guide is particularly focused on Siemens devices, similar concepts will also apply to devices by other manufacturers such as Allen Bradley and Mitsubishi. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a blank project. If you want to clear yours, you can go up here to New Project and click Yes. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when you're adding tags is create a channel to deal with the device driver you're going to be using for that device. So you do that under Connectivity, click Click to Add a Channel, and this will bring up the Add Channel Wizard. So here you get to choose the type of device driver you're going to be using. So you got like Allen Bradley's. Uh, Mitsubishi, Honeywell, you got loads. But for my purposes, I'm going to be using a Siemens S7 300. And in my cabinet, I have an additional TCP IP Ethernet card. So I'm going to be going for this driver down here. Uh, it would be the same for a Siemens uh, S7 1500 or 1200. It'd be this fella. Uh, and click Next. Uh, give a name to the channel. I'm just going to call it S7 PLCs. Next, uh, pick the network adapter. Now this is the network adapter that the PLC is connecting to the Kepware server with. So like on this computer, I have a wireless adapter that I'm using to connect to Wi-Fi, but the PLC is actually connected directly via ethernet cable uh, on this card here. So this is the one I'm going for, but this is entirely dependent on your own setup. Oh, once you have that selected, click next. This page lets you deal with uh, how to handle multiple writes that are queued in Kepware. So let's say you press a button five, six times, but those writes haven't yet gone out to the PLC. In a lot of cases, you might only need the most recent write. So you don't need all six to go out, you just need the most recent one, in which case the default of write only latest value would be the option. But in some cases, you may actually need every single one of those writes to go out to the PLC, in which case write all values for all tags would be what you need. And there's also an option for write only latest value for non-Boolean tags. So like an on-off might not, would, all on-offs would also go out to the PLC, but like um, uh, a real number wouldn't. It would only pick the most recent one. And then this other option here, it specifies the the ratio of reads to writes from Kepware to the PLC. So that would be uh, one read for every 10 writes as it's currently set by default. And this would be the case like if you have a, a system where you need to be in constant communication writing out to the PLC, but you only need to read from it every now and then. In this case, this is perfect. Uh, you keep your 10 writes to every read and it makes sure all the writes go out on time. But in some cases, this isn't really necessary and you have a more balanced read-write cycle, in which case you could drop that down to maybe one write to one read or five writes to one read. Um, but I'll just leave it at the default for this. Click Next. And this uh, lets you choose how to deal with invalid readings coming from the PLC. So these would be numbers like NAN or not number, a positive infinity, negative infinity, numbers that don't actually make sense, but you need a way of dealing with them. Um, some devices, if you don't replace it with zero, you're going to run into issues. So this is the default, but in other cases, you may wish to deal with it by yourself, in which case unmodified may be an option. Next. And finally, this is just a summary of the add channel wizard, uh, which just goes through all the options you've selected and you can make any changes. Uh, once you're satisfied, just click Finish. Uh, now you've got a channel, the next thing to do is to add devices. Uh, these represent the physical PLCs you're going to be talking to. So here I'm just going to call this Test 7 300. Uh, click Next and click the model of the type you're going to be using. Um, if you're going to be using the Netlink protocol, uh, you want to be this guy. But for me, I'm using TCP IP, so S7300. And next, 
and here you add in the IP address or if you have a device that supports hostname resolution like 1500 you, you could put in a host name if that's what you're using but IP address will always work and for the S7 300 it's, it's the only option so this is my IP address uh, if you on if you're unsure of what your IP address is for the PLC you can find it out in TIA I have another blog article on the applied projects engineering tech blog that deals with this so if you want to go through that uh, feel free next uh, these let you choose like the the method for determining how often tags in the device are scanned uh, I'm just going to leave it the defaults here but if you ever need to like find more information on your options these blue question mark boxes open up the help window and they give good detail so it could be worth going through these if you're unsure of exactly what you should be picking next uh, these are connection timeouts and request timeouts uh, important values I'm going to leave these all at default but depending on your network setup and how often and how long it might take for replies to return you may need to change these values um, but for these purposes I'm just going to leave these all at default and again if you if you can't connect to the PLC this lets you choose what happens does Kepware continue just constantly trying to reach out to the PLC or does it demote and put it on a timeout so I think it's 10 seconds is the default where it'll wait 10 seconds before trying to pull again next uh, this is the deal with automatic tag generation from files now you can export them using uh, the TIA exporter tool or you can import a step 7 project file a dot s7p um, you do that later on but this chooses lets you choose how to deal with the tags once you have them uh, so you can do it on every startup or don't generate at all um, I'm not using this for the tutorial so I'm just going to click next uh, here lets you choose the port number uh, the default for S7 devices is 102 or if you're using Netlink it's 1099 and these will typically be the ports you use to communicate with the S7 device but if you're going through some maybe like a, a firewall or some specific network configuration that requires you talk to something else in between you might need to change this port number but in general it's going to be 102 next uh, these are specific low level kind of packet size options so you have your maximum PDU size um, which will be negotiated between Kepware and the device itself but if you want to set it lower you, you can do that if you need to for your network um, but down here are two very important numbers uh, this lets you specify the rack and the slot of the CPU that you're connecting to and for the S7300 it's always going to be 0 and 2 and for the 1500 and 1200 it's going to be 0 and 0 or 0 and 1 they both work but for other devices these could be entirely different it entirely depends on the specific configuration of the cabinet so uh, you have to make sure these are right or the communication won't work uh, this lets you pick the byte order that you're going to be using from Ketware in communicating uh, the default is big engine but little engine is also available and this is where you select the tag file to import from for auto tag generation I'm not doing this in this but you can pick step 7 project file or TIA portal exporter file next and finally this is just a summary screen that goes through all the various options uh, is once you're happy with all this just click finish and there you go that's your device created now the final step to adding tags in Kepware is you actually add tag itself so what you do is you come up to the device come over here give us a right click and click new tag this will bring up the property editor for your new tag uh, the only required attributes here are name and address so I'm using a temperature sensor so I'm just going to call it TT001 now for the address the quickest way to find this is if you go over to the TIA so let me open that up uh, in here what you do is you go down to the program or the data block that contains the tag you're looking for 
there he is, TT001. And from here, you actually have enough information to get the address if you know the S7 naming conventions. So for data block one, it would be DB1, and then a real is a DBD in S7, and the offset is 10. So that would give you the address of DB1.DBD10, which is the address you're looking for. But if you're using a different data type and you're not sure of that specific uh, code, then a quick way of finding it is to come down here to info, then go over to cross references. And in here, if you have it referenced anywhere else within the TIA program, it'll pop up and you can see the address, which is db1.dbd10. Um, but if you don't have a reference yet, uh, what you can quickly do is come up here and go show all objects and this will pop up and you'll get to see the address. Now, once you have that, you can go back over to Kepware uh, pop that in, db1.dbd10, and you can choose the data type. Uh, reels in S7 uh, correspond to floats here. Uh, and once you have the data type in, you can do scaling options. So you can choose whether you want it to be non linear or square root as the default. Uh, and yeah, with that, you get to click OK. And that's the tag added into Kepware. Now, to make sure that the tag is actually working as it's supposed to be, uh, you can come up here to the quick line, click this guy, and this will bring up a utility that lets you browse the tags you have saved in Kepware and read their values at the moment. So if you come up to here and then over here, you get to see the guy and you have a reading being pulled back of 22.8. And to make sure that this is the correct reading and uh, you just haven't gotten something wrong somewhere, you can go back to TIA um, come to your data block, come up to here and click this button to monitor all. Now when you do this, TIA will connect over to your PLC and start reading the live values. And there you get to see 22.7. Let me go back. And just get in here. And over here, you get 22.7. So there you see. You have your tags fully configured in Kepware and you're getting the right values back. With that, we successfully set up a tag in Kep server and made sure it's returning the correct values. That's it for this video, but if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me via the email in the description below, and thanks for watching.